Hello everyone. I hope you're doing well. And, you know, we are here today because it's Valentine's Day, or slightly before, or after, depending on when you watch this. Um, or, I guess, if you don't watch within like two days of the release, then you're going to be a little bit lost. But, context, this video is being uploaded basically on Valentine's Day somewhere. And, you know, I was thinking, I haven't posted in a hot second, and uh, what can I do that's in theme with Valentine's Day? Obviously, it's talking about the thing that I love the most. Myself. <laughs> I'm just kidding, of course, but what we're going to be talking today are some of the things which I love in theme with Valentine's Day. Get it? Because, like, love Valentine's Day. Okay, no, never mind. If you do have something better to do on Valentine's Day than watch this video, then props to you, I guess, whatever. It's not like I care. Your business is your business, but, we, you know, we will be moving forth with some of the things that I, Mike, the bike, no space between the and bike, uh, some of the things that I love. And, you know, I thought, what is related to love if not this very song called Liebstrom, which I'm sure I did not pronounce correctly, but it is German, so maybe I did. Um, and it's, you know, translates to dreams of love. And, you know, this is a song that I've liked since I was like a kid and I was learning piano and then hearing these crazy awesome pianists play these really complex uh, pieces and like it was just so amazing to me and then like just listen to that blast in the background maybe it's a little bit too loud I'll turn it down just a little bit but yeah like this song is a banger no matter which way you look at it it's like Franz Liszt also mispronounced the name, I'm sure, but he was like Austrian or something. Uh, but like published in 1850, you know, like this song just doesn't miss. All oh, it's always good. I'm telling you, man. Uh, it's also translated to "love dream," I think, which is another way that you might have heard it. But man, I love this song. This is like my favorite. Uh, yeah, is it? Yeah, my favorite piano piece and. I don't know, it's just so good, man. It's so good. I love, ha ha ha, get it? Because uh, Valentine's, never mind. Uh, I love the song, and I've played it before too, and it's super fun to play, and it's like a really, you, you get really passionate when you're listening to it and you're singing it, or you're not singing it, when you're playing it. So all in all, so good. Oh my God, I've listened to like a bunch of different people play this. Never misses, I'm in love with the song. Get it? I'm saying love a lot because Valentine's Day. Okay, next thing that I quote unquote love is this poem called The Lockless Door by Robert Frost. So a little bit of context, when I was a wee bicycle, but a tricycle, you might, you might say, um, I took a creative writing class and for well, I forgot what it's exactly called, but like the National Poem in Your Pocket Day, something along those lines. We each got like a little, you know, a little card printout that had a poem on it. You know, not nothing super long, nothing super duper complex, nothing like, you know, a teenager wouldn't be able to understand. And I got this poem by Robert Frost, a real G, called The Lockless Door. So why don't we read it? The Lockless Door by Robert Frost. It went many years, but at last came a knock, and I thought of the door with no lock to lock. I blew out the light. I tiptoed the floor and raised both hands in prayer to the door. But the knock came again. My window was wide. I climbed on the sill and descended outside. Back over the sill, I bade a come in to whoever the knock at the door may have been. So at a knock, I emptied my cage to hide in the world and alter with age. And as it's repeating, um, just know that the song in the background is indeed Franz Liszt's Love Dream, Liebstrom. My God, I'm not pronouncing that correctly. Anyways, this poem is really great because, you know, as a wee little tricycle, I was able to read it and I'm like, wow, look, it rhymes. And <laughs> indeed it does. And it's also just like, 
evocative, you know? Like, there's something about it that, like, brings about some sort of feeling. And, you know, when I was a young one, when I was a tricycle, I, I, I kind of got it. I was like, oh, this is nice. I'll hang it next to my mirror. And there it hung for four or five years. And, you know, I just, like, looked at it every time I was brushing my teeth or whatever. And I would read it, and I'd be like, huh, it's the same poem as always. Boring. But I was lazy, so I never removed it. And then come COVID-19. Then came COVID-19, sorry. Then came COVID-19, and suddenly, I was stuck inside of my room. And, you know, I I really liked these lines at the end. So at a knock, I emptied my cage to hide in the world and alter with age. Like, mmm, delicious. And, like, contextualizing this poem with the COVID situation, distance learning for young students, um, just generally, you know, the idea of this door imagery is just all the more powerful. And I, I could do a whole video about this, you know, if I put in some more thought and figured out what I wanted to say. But just know that this poem, it hits. If you ever see me and bring up this poem, let's be best friends. Okay, anyways, I have to put a stop to Mr. List here as he's smashing those piano keys to talk about another thing that I love. So in line with this music poetry thing that we've got going on, I'm here to tell you your favorite musician is not the best musician. It is this band called T-Square from Japan. I believe the official term for their genre is called J-Jazz. That is J-Jazz. And, I mean, let's just take a listen. Hopefully this doesn't get me destroyed by YouTube. But, come on, Miss Wojcicki, please, be, be merciful. Just, like, take a listen. And then a little bit later on. I mean, it's just so good, guys. And I know, like, I'm, I'm skipping around a bunch, but I can also look at, we can also take a look at, like, uh, take a look at this Hirotaka Izumi who I believe actually died a couple years back uh, rest in peace um, but he was the pianist I believe or the, the the keyboard for the group and man he was so good like real inspiration basically inspiration goals kind of thing and there's some other 1987 you know performances where they absolutely smash it and like their, their discography is just all around so good t-square trust me guys give them a listen really good music if you're like you know need something in the background while you're working or doing some random chores or just like walking around really hits really hits now some of you may be thinking what is this bicycle guy talking about he's crazy he's crazy but trust me they're so good they're so good guys come on Give them a chance. But anyways, I mean, like, just listen to that soulful saxophone. And then it's become, it swells. And then in come the other instruments. You can tell I'm not very good at describing music, I'm sorry. <laughs> but like, look at that. It's crooning. It's crooning, guys. Come on. Okay, anyways. All right, that's enough. That's enough. But yeah, this band, Sick AF, T-Square, give them a listen. I love them. 
Um, and so we come to some other, oh yeah, wow. And we come to some other like creative stuff, I guess you could, you could call it. So like we did poetry, some songs. Now we have a book series that really, you know, define my childhood is what you can say. So as many of you other Zoomer type people may have encountered, the Percy Jackson series was, you know, really widely pushed in school libraries and stuff like that. And also it was great, especially for this whole, like, you know, teen fiction kind of thing where there's a lot of random stuff that's not really, you know, impactful. Having this sort of overarching series, it was like the MCU of uh, Zoomer literature, if you may. And I mean, it was crazy. Like there's interlocking series and there's other like mythology stuffs. And it was like, man, if you were a, if you were a kid and you like mythology, and you like these random stories about like crazy stuff going on. Percy Jackson was so good. I'm telling you, man. And I really love this series. And, you know, I enjoy book and poem stuff. And like just getting a start out with something very familiar very like it's, it's able to tell you know not the deepest story of course but something with like you know strong themes behind it and having like these heroes that you could be like wow i might be like a like an athena kid or something like that you know that kind of thing so yeah love this series other series are also good kane chronicles or whatever i don't know about magnus chase i don't know if i finished all the books or or, or it's just good rick riordan strong solid thankfully not controversial i think uh, author so harry potter kids tough luck anyways another creative thing is comedy because i'm the funniest person i know meant to be not taken seriously um but you know i really enjoy comedy and i think that You know, I've tried to be funny in the past, largely unsuccessful endeavor, but, you know, I do my best. Um, I have always enjoyed watching, like, random skits, you know, Key and Peele, Saturday Night Live, random comedy sketches that I see online and I click on on YouTube because I'm a Zoomer and I have no attention span. And even stuff like Netflix comedy specials, it's like, oh, it's good stuff. It's good stuff, man. And, you know... I really appreciate the work that goes into a lot of this stuff. You know, all the writing involved is crazy. And delivering these kinds of things is very difficult. So to all, to all you know, budding stand-up comics like yours truly. That was a joke as well, but not a very funny one. Um, anyways, I don't, know, I don't even know where I'm going with this. I'm crazy. Like, what's happening to me? Um, I'm, going, I'm going insane. Anyways, I like comedy. I like funny people. If you're not funny... It's not going to work out. I'm sorry. Valentine's Day, you know. But unless you are gut-bustingly funny, I don't know. I don't know. What can you do? But anyways, I don't even know. I have SNL pulled up here. Uh, I don't even watch that show on NBC or whatever. I just watch clips on YouTube. Anyways, comedy and also tragedy. Ooh, that contrast. Am I right? So I am also a gamer much to the chagrin of many individuals, uh, including myself. And one game that I like very much is called Amori. As you might imagine, there was some COVID shenanigans that went down when I started playing a lot of, a lot more video games. And a, and this talks about a hikikomori, which is basically a shut-in, which is what I was for a very long time. Not exactly, but, you know, I can relate. And, you know, since I was inside for, like, weeks at a time or whatever, I would just be randomly playing some some dumb stuff, some random stuff. And then I chanced upon this gem of a game. Apparently there was a super long and convoluted development cycle, which left many people unpleased. But I was involved in that, so I have no stake in that. And I just got, you know, the final product when it was released. And I was like, you know what, I'll play this game. Went into it blind, loved the hell out of it. My favorite single-player game, bar none. And what really makes this game so special is, you know, it's not afraid to tackle sad stuff or hard stuff to talk about. Maybe it is a little bit afraid, but when you're playing it, 
it makes you feel a lot of emotions. And that's what I really love, you know, feeling all these crazy emotions. Of course, it is like a psychological horror, but there's also a lot of happy, joyous moments and a lot of ones that just make you feel, ah, man, you know, you wish you, you wish this could keep going on, but you know, it has to come to a close. And come to a close, it did. And, you know, a little tidbit is that, you know, I mentioned this in one of my other hit videos on Amori, um, but my quote-unquote gamer tag, or like handle that I use online a couple uh, sometimes, I guess, is sunny, as in like S-U-N-N-Y, as though there was a lot of sun around, right? And I made this when I was a kid, and I was like, oh, what's a simple one-word thing that describes me, maybe, that could be associated with my gamer tag? And I said sunny, and I didn't really think much about it. And then, lo and behold, there are actual people on this planet called Sunny. I did not know that, and I felt very guilty for like taking their name and stealing it for myself after the matter. But anyways, main character in this game called Amori, well, there's two of them actually. One is called Amori, okay, and the other one is called Sunny. And so when I scrolled onto this game's wiki page and looked up some stuff to see if I'd missed anything after I finished the game, I saw that, oh, it says Sunny did this. Oh, Sunny is here. And then I thought, you know, maybe it read something from my Steam profile page or it saw my gamer tag somewhere and then, like, the wiki page is automatically updating. updating. You know, AI is crazy these days. Maybe it did that. And then I, it took me li genuinely, like, 15 minutes of just scrolling through the wiki before realizing, may wait, you know, something about the the grammar is just specifically catered towards Sunny being this the actual name of the of the of the character, and I looked deeper into it, and Sunny was actually their name, and I'm like, oh my god, this game was made for me, man. Are you kidding? Like, I chose this game this name for my gamer persona. Some other you know creator of this game chose this for you know the main character. And I'm like, I'm hooked. I'm hooked. And I am hooked. And, oh, probably should play some music. I'm getting too into this. Um, and I got hooked. And it's just, like, such a good game. If you can play it, I totally recommend it. If not, watch it. If not, listen to me talk about it. Because I could talk about it forever. Um, but, yeah. This is so, this game is so good, guys. I love it. I love it. You know, I enjoy doing these videos where I just talk about stuff that I like. Because... I love all the stuff that I'm talking about. And then we come to my first flame, Dota 2. You could say that we're like exes in a sort, if that is applicable to a video game. I realize that that's really weird. I'm sorry. But yeah, um, this game is, you know, the first really game that I played actively, I would say. My bit first big multiplayer game, I've played it for eight years at this point, probably. Yikes. Um, but yeah, I started around like 2015-ish, 2016, and I've been playing ever since, on and off, and I've taken breaks for like months to years, but I've always come back, and this is really like my soul game. If I could choose a best design game, I would choose this one. If I could choose a favorite game, I would also choose this one, and if I could choose a piece of media or a piece of content that has changed me, um, like nothing else has, it would be this video game, Dota 2. <laughs> Through it. I've learned communication skills. I've learned to type extremely quickly in order to get the last laugh in before I mute another player. And I've just learned how to manage not going insane while being in a room full of crazy folks. Uh, some people may call me calm or some people may call me level-headed, that kind of thing, I don't know. If you, do, if you are, then understandable because I've learned to really keep it in check because when you're playing these aggravating team-based games, if you pop, if you, if you, I don't know, what's the expression? If you pop a fuse, I don't know, is that the right? If you pop a fuse um, at like the first, you know, at, at the first thing that gets you angry, then you're going to have a really rough time as a gamer. And maybe that's translated into other parts of my life. Who knows? But really beautiful game. Love it to death. Love the esports scene, and I could do I could do like not just a video, I could do like a documentary on this thing. That's how much I freaking love this game. Anyways, ugh. 
enough nerd talk, enough nerd talk, my goodness. So here's something that is a little bit more abstract, but one thing that I love, as you know, I'm sure many of, I'm sure everybody does, is a good story. Now I've written about this for, you know, like personal discussions, and I've reflected upon this myself a little bit, but I just, you know, who doesn't love a good story, right? And I really love stories of all kinds, especially ones that are people's stories and that are, you know, people that are in my community or people that I know. That's why I really love listening to other people talk. Um, and I really love just like experiencing what others have, like th their knowledge and what they've gone through and having them pass that down. I feel like it's really valuable and I just appreciate it so much. And even on like a broader level, you know, you read news stories, you read things that people have written, anything and everything, fiction and, and non-fiction. I mean, someone put a piece of themselves into that text that you see on your screen or on your page, right? I just feel like that's incredible. And, you know, in the future, I would love to keep sharing stories, perhaps through more videos, uh, but also through like written work. And I really enjoy reading other people's stories, internet comments even, some of those are pretty funny short stories, novels, poems, video essays, videos just in general, like the mediums are always expanding and I feel like it's so inspirational to me. Like I just love, I love stories and I love people. What a segue, am I right? But really, I'm like such a human based, like focused person, <laughs> you know, maybe I've never had really, I never really had a pet um, that I've had for a long time, i.e had for more than like two days. Um, but I just like people so much. People are so awesome. They do great things and they're so kind and they've helped me so much. And people are just like, oh wow, people. <laughs> I mean, I sound, I sound like a crazy person talking about this, but I'm just a big believer in like humans first. So I love, you know, dogs and cats and you know, domesticated animals and all animals to some extent. I mean, wasps can kind of like, you know, stop that. And mosquitoes, like, please. So the love is limited, let's say, for some, for some species. But humans are just the best. Like, there's t horrible, terrible parts about us and our societies. But when you look at just like what people can do, my, like, oh my god. We went to the moon? Are you kidding me? I can't even imagine that. Um, like, you see the stuff that people are doing nowadays, and it's just, it blows your mind. So, on both that kind of scale and on a local level, we see people overcoming the difficulties that they face, terrible circumstances, just living through each day. It's inspiring. Um, and that's really what I love most about being alive, is being able to see other people also living through the same sort of experiences, living through their own unique experiences, and hearing their stories. Double segue. How about that? Okay, so I've talked a lot about the things that I love, which are myriad, apparently, and I have one last thing that I might be forgetting about. Oh yeah, it's this, uh, it's this tab with a conspicuously non-specific name. I wonder what that could be about. Bam. So what might I love? Maybe it's my dear viewers who are so kindly watching this video um but honestly like i've i mentioned that i really enjoy listening to people but you know i enjoy being listened to as well maybe it's an ego thing maybe i just like hearing the sound of my own voice but i really appreciate when people take that time to listen so thank you for listening much love and you know if you did this instead of spending something, doing something else on your Valentine's Day, then even more love. <laughs> Much appreciated. Anyways, thank you for listening. If you have things that you love, feel free to type them in the comments below or something like that. I don't know how, how people do these sorts of things on YouTube. Anyways, thank you and have a nice day or night or intermediary period.